I'm going, I'm going. Hello. Hi. Hello, everybody. I'm just going to wait to make sure it's going live on my channel. Waiting, waiting. Okay. Is it working? I still don't have it yet. <laughs> Okay, I'll just get into it. Um, hello, everybody. Welcome to this month's discussion for the Literally Dead Book Club. We are live now. Um, this month, or last month, we read Colson Whitehead's That's right, got hold up the book. So <laughs> <to> everybody. <laughs> Thank you for joining us. Um, actually, drop me an emoji in the comments. Give me a skull if you read the book. And give me just a heart if you didn't and you're just here for fun. Um, this is probably the most DNF'd I've ever seen a book club. <laughs> so if you, if, even if you tried, you can still drop that skull. You know, if you gave it a solid effort. <laughs> and I appreciate everybody for, for joining. So I'm here today with Rachel. Um, she is going to just like talk about her channel really quick. I have a link down below. Um, maybe what you can expect from her reading, and then she's gonna pitch the book to us and explain it to you for those of you who really didn't read it and you're just here to hang out. Hi, everyone. Hello, hello. I'm Rachel. Uh, you can find me on my YouTube channel, Rachel Ray. I'm on Instagram and Twitter as Rachel Ray Reads. Um, and I read all genres, a huge variety of books. Um, I do spend a lot of my time reading nonfiction, but I try and mix it up with all different. Um, types of books from backlist to, to new books as well. Uh, so today we're going to be talking about Colson Whitehead's Zone One. Um, and I was really excited to jump into this book, just especially with his new accolades of uh, being a Pulitzer Prize winner two times now. <laughs> um, I thought we'd go and dig back into uh, some of his catalog and see what we can find. And we came across a horror book. Um, and we can expound more on that title, but this book is about uh, Mark Spitz, who is a young black man who has made his way to New York's Zone One community, which is a location that has been cleared of the uh, life-threatening zombies, but there are stragglers that are remaining. <laughs> and Mark is a part of a volunteer team whose job is to clean up or exterminate these stragglers. And so we follow him for three days and just experience what life was like pre-zombie, like BZ and post-zombie <laughs> uh, AZ. So that's the quick spiel about uh, the book. Uh, you also asked me to list some of my favorite uh, thrillers or horrors as well. Yes, please. I think uh, sure. it's, it's just good for people to, if you are here for like a thriller book club, if um, anybody is so inclined to subscribe, which I hope they do. Maybe they can get an idea of the thrillers that you do, you do check out. Sure. So I went and looked through some of my more recent ones. So I really enjoyed Miracle Creek by Angie Kim. Yes. The Water Cure by Sophie McIntosh. Love, love that. Um, Allegedly by Tiffany D. Jackson and The Institute by Stephen King. So those were kind of my favorites in the past few years. That's awesome. Uh, have you read Monday's Not Coming? I have not, but it's on I'm, my TBR. I love that one. So allegedly it's on my TBR. That's exciting. Okay. Um, what did you just say? I was going to comment on something else you just said. <laughs> oh, uh, the water cure. It's so funny because the water cure, I just like maybe based on the cover, um, I actually always thought that was like literary fiction. And someone recently told me that it's actually like intense, like thriller vibes. And now I, yeah. I just bought it. So. Yeah, but it, it kind of does have some literary spin to it, too. Sure. So, I'm but so it's, <laughs> yes, <laughs> so definitely expect that. But it's it's really fast paced and um, it doesn't paint the whole picture, which I love about books. Sometimes you don't have to tell me everything. Leave a leave a little bit to the I agree. American, so agree. there's lots of that. So my, my favorite thing about doing these lives is that I like purposely ignore my hosts updates and reviews on the book. So I have no idea what you thought, literally no clue. You could have given this one star or five stars and I have no idea. So I wanna ask everybody in the comments what their final rating was. And then um, if you wanna tell me, if you just wanna tell me right here what you gave it. Are 
we will wait and see what everyone says. Okay, you go ahead and tell us your rating. Me? Now? Yeah. Okay. I gave this a two out of five. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I mean, okay, it's not surprising because as we see here, the comments are rolling in one star, two star, one star, two star. Oh, somebody gave it a five, 4.5. All right. I, yeah, I guess I'm not surprised by your two, but I'm sad. <laughs> oh, don't be sad. Okay, so I gave it, I gave it actually a three and a half. Um, okay. So I enjoyed it more, but a three, a, anything in the three range is low for me anyway. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah. Same. I find it really difficult to give a one star because if I'm at one for a That's significant like, period of time, then I'm is. usually pushing DNF territory. <laughs> I have to say, like, I, I, if I, if I wasn't reading this for the book club, oh, I would have DNF'd it. There was like three separate times that I was like, is this book still going? <laughs> but you know what? I think I would have been doing myself a disservice because, um, one, I've never read anything like this before. And so, like, that in itself is valuable to me. Um, two, this is my first Colson Whitehead. So, like, oh, okay how could there be a better introduction than an average reading? Because then from here, we can only go up. Mm, mm, I feel so that. <laughs> I would love to know, um, I know you've read some Colson Whitehead, but I'm not sure which ones you've read. So what do other ratings are like, how does this compare to his other books for you? Um, so I've only read one other, and that okay. was The Nickel Boys. Okay. And I really enjoyed that one. I gave that one a four out of five stars. Um, I do own the Underground Railroad, but I haven't gotten to it yet. Yeah, same. Um, okay, so everyone who, okay, so there is a lot of DNFs in the comments. Um, I appreciate it's okay. you guys it's for- okay. I'm like, so last year, 2019 was the year where I was like, I'm not going to be ashamed of this anymore. And I'm going to make a video. And I have like this whole video of 2019 DNFs. If you got a little plug, if you guys want to check it. that out, um, where I just was like, I don't, I don't have to push, push through. I'm going to start DNFing. I'm going to do better at DNFing. Um, so it's, I don't think it's necessarily a bad thing. I, I don't want people to torture themselves through a book that they're not enjoying. Yeah, because for sure. We had no idea. Like we opened it and we're like, yes, zombies. And then it's like, okay, where are we going now? <laughs> I think we, we did know that it was going to take a more like, I don't know if you want to call it a literary take. Um, but I think we knew that just based on Colson Whitehead's other, like, even just knowing that he's like a well-renowned award-winning author, like you, you kind of expect it to take a more, um, less genre fiction take, I guess. Uh -huh. Um, okay. I want to know, okay. With only a two star, I'm sure you can think of some things you liked about it though. Yes. So tell me something that you liked about, that you appreciated about the book. Uh, <clears throat> I love the complex prose in certain chunks of the book. Uh, so there's one section on page 16 that was like, yes, um, where he talks about, I'm trying to open this, am I good? Where it's like really beautiful writing and then there's like an abrupt change that's like oh. really jarring. Um, so it says he was an angel of death ushering these things on their unstalled journey for this fear, not a mere exterminator of eliminating pests and, and all these things. And then it just goes, he shot Miss Alcott in the face. Like that's the next sentence. <laughs> so I'm just like, oh, I like this. I like this kind of kind of flow. Um, I also liked uh, the the relationship between him and them. Mm -hmm. I think although we did so many flashbacks to who he was before, I think that was one of the, the flashbacks or explanations that really showed who he was as a person and as an adult and how, how that compared to how he was managing his life um, and what we were seeing in those three days. Um, so yeah, those were, those were two things that I really liked. For sure. So that's that's the more um, intellectual way of, of explaining what I wrote. My wrote was I like the writing. That's what I. <laughs> <laughs> this is that why I, 
that was good too. This is why I invite hosts who um, have more of an ability to, I also only got like five hours of sleep last night. So I'm, I'm very lacking in uh, intellect right now. I wrote down that like, I, I just, <laughs> I liked the writing. I liked that. Um, I think he just really, he well structured um, sentences. Like, I don't know how else to say it. The writing was solid. I like how he created like this tense atmosphere with the short choppy sentences. And then right in the middle of it, we'd be suddenly in a flashback. And I know that for a lot of people that was their number one critique is that they found it confusing. Um, they found it jarring. But for me and my reading taste, I love the stream of consciousness style. Mm -hmm. I am so happy to be confused and lost and not really know what timeline we're in and not really care. Um, so my favorite thing was definitely the writing, um, mm -hmm. just in general. And I think that the um, his memories, like I feel like it could have gotten really formulaic in like, here's an activity, here's a, here's a memory, here's a person's memory, and then back to this, and then back to this, and then back to this. But I, I just liked, um, I don't know, I just like really liked the structure of it. That's honestly like got the three stars for me is it was really enjoyable for me to read. I fell asleep reading. I will say that. I think you did too. <laughs> I think a lot of us did. Um, but I do think that overall, I really appreciate the writing style of this. And I, I do have more from him sitting on my TBR shelf. I actually have the Nickel Boys. Um, I just borrowed it from the library on audio. So I'm excited to try to listen to it. I did try to listen to the audiobook of this. I don't know if anybody else did. Um, I really yeah, didn't I like it. Audio. You did? Yeah. And did you Did you enjoy the experience? I felt like his narration style was like, um, how do I explain it? More jovial than the situation fit? Uh, yeah, the tone. I think it was the tone of the reader's voice. I totally understand what you mean by that. I finished the last, I think it was like the third day I did on audio. Oh. Um, just because I was falling asleep so frequently through it. I'm like, no, you must sit here and listen and finish this. Um, but I, I agree. It was, it, was, uh, it was a little too upbeat. And that's not how I heard him. Yeah. In my in my um internal voice, in my mind. Yeah. If anybody hanging out here hasn't read the book yet and you're just trying to be convinced to like pick up the book, I I it's not that I wouldn't recommend the audiobook, but I think this isn't the type of book that you can go back and forth with. Um, because like Rachel just said, the internal voice is so different. And the same thing happened to me just recently. I was listening to The Skin We're In by Desmond Cole. Mm -hmm. um, which is like a nonfiction about um, police brutality. And his tone of speaking is was just so like happy and joyful and it was so <laughs> confusing. So I was like, this is not, this is not, I've been struggling with audiobooks lately. <clears throat> anyway. Somebody in the studio would be like, um, let's, let's run this back. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Um, okay. I guess, I guess being a two star, we could definitely talk about things you didn't like. So, Give me, give me some things that you weren't a fan of. Okay, uh, first, the top concern, it's too slow. Um, <clears throat> I feel like even though we have the literary tie-in, the foundation of this is still horror. We're still talking about zombies. It's still apocalyptic, people disconnecting with one another. That's still like the root. So you need to punch and you need to punch often. So I felt like when we started in the beginning, we got the first punch with the five women in the office, right? <clears throat> and then there was a huge lull and lag of character building, flashbacks, and then the military aspect, it, it didn't punch enough. So I feel like the perfect mix would have been like every 30 pages or so, we needed to be hit with what the underlining threat was, which was the zombie, right? So if you think about like your walking days and things like that, of course, it's always the how nasty can humans be to one another, but the underlining threat is the zombies the whole time. We needed to be continually reminded of, of what that underlining threat was to keep us entertained. And I felt like because the writing was so slow, we were almost like, focusing so much on the process or the lull of the job. And maybe that's what he was trying to 
trying to put across with that was that although this is a life threatening job, it was boring as all get out until something almost, you know, something that almost killed you popped up. <laughs> um, so that was my main dislike, just a little too slow. Uh, and then also the language caused me to disconnect from the story often. So I'm a person, if I'm reading through, I see a word I don't know, I'm going to stop and look it up. If I can't figure it out from context, I look up a lot of words. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> and I'm like, this word meant camping? We could have just been camping. <laughs> there, oh my God. There was like one sent. I remember one specific sentence that had like, six words in it that were all like five syllables. And I was like, I don't know a single word in this statement. Am so I the stupid person alive? <laughs> I know that I know that Colson Whitehead is like just an intelligent person. And it's not that like, oh, he just used a thesaurus to find a bigger word. But sometimes I was like, bitch, use a simpler <laughs> word. We didn't need to do all of that. Oh, shout out to Stardust It Reads. Yes, I play Death Stranding. And it's it's like it's like that. I think Death Stranding is like the baby delivery game. It's, it's, it's like if you were the UPS man after the apocalypse. That's what that video game is. And so so shout out to you for, for pointing that out. It, it's kind of like that. Yes. Oh my God. Yeah, I um I definitely jotted down that like this is this is just too it's so hard because like I knew what it was going in I knew that it wasn't going to be action the synopsis literally tells you that he's doing mundane tasks okay like I, I get it but overall it was just too mundane for me it was too melancholy um it obviously lacked action but I think it also kind of lacked heart like I just I didn't I didn't get convinced to really care about anybody and the thing is you weren't supposed to like Mark Spitz is just an every man he's he's just in a boring situation in life he doesn't have a lot going for him he he's a he's not the most interesting guy and like that's that's the point and I, I get all these things and I can appreciate all these things but like did I love the reading experience no mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is interesting. Did anyone have issues with how the writer always used Mark's full name? Um, I don't know. I think I I don't I don't have issue with it, but the whole time I was just like, okay, so what's your real name? What's mm -hmm. your real name? <laughs> and we never got that. We got and the history he, of how he got his name. At the end. They tell you at the end how he gets the name, and then you're like, hmm. Hmm. Okay. It was questionable. Um, that was a punch that I appreciated, though. So that's me too, because the build. Yeah, it was like three significant scenes of action, and two of them were at the last minute. Yeah, what I saw oh, from right. a lot of reviews was that um, Sunday, day three of this, was the best part. Mm -hmm. and was so strong but like it was 30 pages yeah you had to get so through it. all of this <laughs> oh, man. i guess we are like covering spoilers if anybody wants to talk about anything that's more of a spoiler we only have 10 minutes left of the live show oh man that was fast okay um i had a question that was like why did you originally pick up this book um but i feel like that's just because you know cool thing like that I can't wait. <laughs> I think um, I was just wondering about like pandemic because I think when I picked up this book and I knew it wasn't going to be like action zombie, I thought maybe it would be like more interesting of a look at like pandemics and plagues. And that's kind of why I was intrigued by it because obviously we're currently in a pandemic and I was, mm -hmm. I think I was kind of interested to see like the parallels with real life. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't know that I, I got that so much because the plague is obviously so much more extreme. But I was wondering like, what you think in general about picking up um, like pandemic books in a pandemic time. Is that something that you seek out? Is that something that you've done much of? Uh, I don't do it intentionally. Mm -hmm. um, but there are some books that I've been reading recently that I've been seeing lots of parallels to. So I recently read and reviewed Mallory, which is Bird Box 2. Right. Um, 
<clears throat> and so lots of parallels there. But I, I usually don't intentionally try and match my books with my current events. Um, sometimes it just happens organically and then yeah. it's something that I'll discuss like in the review or the wrap up. Yeah, I feel like the same is true for me. I've kind of like accidentally picked up a couple books like that. I do think it's, um, I've seen a lot of people like go out of their way to pick up pandemic books in this time. And I think it's, it's always interesting um, why people do that. And, mm-hmm. you know, if it's like a comfort thing or if it's, I think kind of the, um, I just always like to think about like the intent of genres and like, what is the intent of an apocalypse book? Like what's, what's the point? Mm-hmm. And I, sometimes I think that um, obviously this was written in like 2011, so it's not really relevant, but it's, it's kind of a, I think it's a look at like, the world could be so much worse than it is right now. Mm-hmm. Like look at look at how terrible the world is in here. And le- it's kind of escapism in a in a strange way that's in a in a negative way, mm. and I I think I enjoy that, and I think I I think I will pick up more apocalypse books in this time because it's almost like a comforting thing that's like things aren't that bad. Look how bad <laughs> they could be. Look it what could, could be happen. zombies outside. <laughs> could um, be zombies. I hear you. Um, I think. For me, it just goes back to like what I said before, where we have the the huge immediate threat, which is the zombie. But the the true analysis is who are the real monsters? Who are the real Megans? Who are the real people who um, who push that that line between what is for survival and and what is just plain greed or or nasty or whatever it may be you know what i mean um and then how do people try and continue to connect or not connect um despite those things and it's a couple of things that he pointed out he addressed uh gentrification on page 29 and then he also talked about maybe the resurrection of racism after something uh so tragic like this and it almost made me think of like um, when when huge uh, bouts of trauma happens to a community, they're united through that trauma, kind of like 9-11, right? Where everyone's like, we're all in this together kind of a thing. And then as time progresses um, and, and there's space between the trauma and the people, then there becomes more, you know, division among that group again, where they start to pay attention to the little things again. So um, I did see him touch those two things. Um, did you have any thoughts about those? I think, um, I think it's, it's always interesting to like, look at a horror book and see how the horrors of like real life are reflected in like supernatural horrors. Mm -hmm. And I, I appreciate when a book like more subtly, like, talks about things without talking about things. Mm-hmm. I think if you really analyze this book, which I haven't, but like I, I know that there are so many like political and racial um, overtones. Like it didn't overtly discuss race, but you could draw the parallel between like what's happening with the zombie apocalypse to like America's reconstruction and like the idea that um, this oh we don't see race anymore we don't see a division between people everyone's the same nothing matters um when it's consistently that that's not true um i don't know a lot about like military and war stuff but like Mm -hmm. i'm very interested to go like read some read some like essays on this book and like people who um, really delved into like the intellectual background of what's actually being said in this book, because I don't Mm -hmm. have the facilities for those conversations, Mm -hmm. but I can appreciate what I, what I think this book was doing. And I think I probably operated it a little bit in appreciation more so than full understanding. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like maybe I would have given it a three, but I know that there's so much that he was doing that I can't even fully appreciate until I think about it more. You know what I mean? 
I hear you. That makes sense. Um, this is great. I would actually love um, to hear any other recommendations for books that anybody um, thinks is similar in any way, like Apocalypse books in general. Station Eleven is one of my favorite things. Um, but if anybody has any, do you, have you read any other like zombie stuff, either better or worse or totally different than this? Um, so I thought of two books when we were thinking about connections here. Um, the obvious one was the Walking Dead graphic novels right. was probably, that's probably my most recent zombie read. And I read that through to like volume 12, I think, and then just stopped for some reason. Um, but a book that this reminded me of, and they're two completely different types of books, um, was Cherry by Nico Walker. And that story is about, uh, it starts off with a man who is addicted to um, methamphetamine and is, is robbing a bank. And it, it tells the story about how he was like in Iraq and, and all these things that happened throughout his life. And he was always this um, fly below the radar type of guy, like never really tried to um, exceed any of his goals, just kind of, you know, living under the radar, um, joined the army because he was indecisive about what he wanted to do with his life. Um, and a lot of that military talk reminded me of Cherry. Um, and then a lot of those punchy scenes, very graphic scenes reminded me of that book as well. So they're really not one in the same, but um, it reminded me of it. For sure. I really appreciate all of the recommendations popping up in here. If anyone else wants more zombie related or apocalypse stuff, like the comments are full of full of good stuff now. Um, the things that came to mind for me were actually books that I never even finished as well. So maybe I don't like zombies. Like maybe that's what I've learned from this experience. <laughs> I don't really know, but I wrote down um, World World War Z isn't the same thing, but like that's another zombie related text mm -hmm. if you, if you want to check it out. Um, and then the girl with all the gifts came to mind. Um, which follows a young girl and uh, is more of like a literary take as well. Um, this is on my TBR. This is not a test. I need to check that out. Um, oh, look, people are mentioning that too. I also saw the book of M mentioned, which I've, I've heard about. So I'm going to jot that down. Um, Okay, to wrap up, what do you what do you think this book could have done to get a five star from you? Like, what could it have changed? What could it have done differently? I do kind of wonder if if he was to rewrite this book in twenty twenty, what it would look like. Hmm. I like to I like to consider that. Um, but what do you what what would it have had to do for you to write all of its wrongs? Uh, he he would have to shorten the lulls. The lows are a little too deep for me. Um, I need I need a little bit more action probably to to have kept my attention. Uh, and then it it's it eases the teaching moment. So if you have a, a little bit more action and teaching in between, um, it's easier to digest instead of like huge chunks of informa information or knowledge dump right in the middle of the story and then we're going to sandwich it with two pieces of action. Um, I think that probably would have lifted it. I'm not sure if this book was capable of a five star for me, even with all of my improvement suggestions. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I agree. I don't know what, I don't know what it could have done. I guess I have the same answer as you. Um, I do think just like structurally, as much as I enjoyed um, the flashbacks and the flashbacks within flashbacks, and all of that stuff. Maybe if there was more structure to it, uh, it could have been at least more engaging. Like if we had the section and then it was broken up into three chapters within the section. So at least you kind of knew where you stood and you knew what was to come. And there was more um, opportunity for like cliffhangers at the end of each section rather than just, I feel like it was the same like tone throughout the entire book. Mm -hmm. I never really felt like there was that much at stake or that I could really fully care about anybody. Mm -hmm. Although I do want to know your favorite character. Do you have a character that like stood out for you? Um, 
Gary was pretty funny in the beginning, um, but I, I think Mim was probably the non-central character that I liked the most. Um, yeah. So, you know what I was really interested in? I was really fascinated by those triplets. Yes. There was like these like these like magical triplets who like everyone was rooting for. And I think it's so interesting, like uh, the idea of like, um, no matter what situation the world is in, there will always be like an obsession with the celebrity. Like that's an yeah. interesting theme of this book. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I almost would have liked an entire book about that. I don't know. Yeah. And, and, and I, I was also thinking about the the painting of the dream, which is something in, that's often in dystopian or apocalyptic books. This whole idea of Buffalo being the epicenter, the future, and then spoiler alert. For a few, hit the mute button if you don't want to hear me say this. Uh, and then it's like, yeah, we got problems up in Buffalo, but we want you to keep doing what you're doing to help this whole situation. Um, I think that's kind of almost like a trope in in those book genres of where it's like, yeah, if we can just get to this, if we can just get to that, and then they finally make it, and it's like. Yeah, it's not what you thought it was, but we can start a new plan now that you're here. <laughs> that's a that's a great point. <clears throat> oh my gosh. Okay, let me see if I jotted anything down else that I wanted to talk about. You know what's funny is we didn't even talk about like the plot of this book, like because it's so like. <laughs> He, like, what is the plot you're trying to what, get? Like, what's happening in this plot? <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, you know, I did I cannot remember the name of anyone other than Mark. Have you just like brain dumped everyone out? <laughs> yeah. There was a lot of characters. We had Caitlin, Carl, Angela, Gary, Jerry, Mim, Oliver, Gladys, Harry, Asher. I start, I always make like a character chart when I'm reading when a bunch of people get introduced and I feel overwhelmed. But like I, I, I couldn't, <laughs> couldn't tell you who these characters are, couldn't tell you their characteristics. I don't remember anything. But maybe that's just because I'm tired. Um, Oh, I wrote down, I also appreciate like the nostalgia, the commentary on nostalgia and um, getting to see his flashbacks to his childhood and like mm -hmm. re-seeing things as an adult, mm -hmm. re-seeing things like in a different light because we're in an apocalypse, but also like there's, there's an interesting idea there about like revisiting the same things as you did as a child and seeing it in a different light. Yeah, um, I, I think, think we all have that first hit when you revisit your elementary school and you're like, it's a lot smaller here than, than I thought it was. So real. <laughs> oh my God, that's so funny. I, I did that in a video recently where I was like re reading childhood books and I went back to my elementary school and I was like, this was my whole world. This was my whole world. This was so big. This was, this was everything. And like, oh my God, that's so funny. Okay. I think that's it, unless you have any other gripes to share. <laughs> uh, no gripes. Um, I'm looking through my notes here. <laughs> I think we all have pretty much like similar thoughts. I think one thing that I'll say, I've only read two Colson White hit books, um, but everyone says the Underground Railroad is great, so I'm already assuming it's probably gonna be better than what my experience was for zone one but that still keeps me excited about him about his own writer arc right if this is the only like earlier book that i've read and more of his later ones are getting better and better i'm i'm still excited about it but it also gives me a little bit of trepidation about how far back in his catalog i'm willing to go um but I'm still excited about him as an author. And I don't think that this one book, even though I gave it a two stars, I don't think I'm like gonna change how excited I am when he releases new books. I completely agree. And I hope that nobody who DNF'd this is going to like <laughs> DNF him as an author. I, I am actually, I'm 0% um, worried about any of his other work. Like I am, I'm so ready to dive into everything else that I have. And it's always so interesting to think of things like this is just like he probably just like sat down and like wrote this, you know, 10 years ago. And like 
he could have written this in a month, you know, and just like yes. throwing it out there. And this, it, this isn't one book cannot dictate the entirety of someone's writing career. Yeah. And I'm, I'm just very excited to read more from him. So, Same. okay, that's it. Thank you guys so much for participating in this live and joining, whether you DNF'd it, whether you, you know, if you gave it a try, if you finished it, if you loved it, I'm so happy for you. Um, thank you so much to Rachel for joining me. And I just uploaded yesterday a video where I uh, announced the next three months of book club picks. If you haven't seen that, we are currently reading Home Before Dark by Riley Saker. I don't know if this is on your radar, Rachel. Um, is this the type of thriller I, I that you read? In a lot of places, but the other one, I don't want to jump ahead and say what the other ones are before you say it. So I'll say it after you say what the other ones are. The one that I'm, I'm, I'm excited about reading. Uh, is it Catherine House? Okay. Okay. We're doing Catherine House. We're doing uh, One by One by Rue Claire, and we're doing The Only Good Indians by Stephen Graham Jones. That one yep. is it. Yeah. I yep. am so bummed that I have to wait so long to read that book. I'm like, I chose it for November. Like, oh my yeah. God, I want to read it right now. I got um, it from my library, so I have to read it pretty quickly. Um, but I'm excited because there's been a lot of talk about um how how gory it is so yeah maybe i was like expecting gore from this one i'm like okay i'm gonna get the gore with this we're killing deer in the woods and the deer are coming back this is gonna be great <laughs> oh I'm that's really great okay well good i'm glad uh maybe you'll hop into the comments of that live show and i will, I will. <laughs> okay thank you guys so much for hanging out i will see you soon make sure you check out rachel's channel again link down below and uh all the all the links down below will be for all of the places that you can learn about the book club and find out what's happening. Okay, bye.